Okay, look at the Tater Bullock, page I and Gimel, second column. The Rebbe was speaking about, the Rebbe was asking the question, why by Avram, is Avraham Yoever alive, and, the, and by Yaakov not, and the Gemara answers, because the Torah itself calls him Yaakov again. We have to understand, which means, in order to come to the level of Yisro, you first need the level of Yaakov. But to come to the level of Avram, you don't need Avram first. So he said, the famous question, what's the purpose of the Neshama coming into the world if the Neshama was in Gan Eden? So the answer is, that Rebbe says, because the Neshama has to become a Baal Tshuva. So the Rebbe says it's three levels of Tshuva. Right, that's what we're in the middle of now. The first level of Tshuva is for the blemishes that blemished in thought, speech, and action, Seichel Amidus, the Avedis, separate the Jew from Hashem, and therefore, what is the union of Tshuva? Revealing Alokuz down here. So he says, L'cha'edo, the, there's a concept of the, the Hashem limited the Shechina between the two poles of the Arden. So he says, but L'cha'edo, it's a Shemayim Rasha Sani Mali. So what do you mean the Shechina is all over? So he says, yeah, that's in an encompassing level. When you talk about a premiumistic level, then it's impossible for infinite alokus to be revealed in a finite setting. And therefore, the only name that we have of alokim, of, of Hashem, which is ours, is the level alokinu, because only through tzimtzum can Hashem be revealed within us. Okay, that's what we're up to now. Um, Okay, so we we'll start now, uh, like 15 lines from the end of the page of Ayin Gimel, second column. This is the first level of tshuva. To re-put Elokai, the level of Elokuz Bikirbi within me. So what does this end? Um, um, let's see where this it just it doesn't have an ending of the paragraph the parentheses okay um Okay, let's go to the end of the prayer, to, to the next page, to the Kitzer. Okay, so he says, what's the level, what's, what did he explain in the previous paragraph? He says, the level of Yaakov is tricking Gimel Tshuvas. One is Sur Meira. He only explained one yet. Sur Meira shal yavani seichem avdilim that Avedah should not be separating the Jew and Hashem. Vaz nasib b'china salokeinu. In other words, like this, a lukus shines in the body, reveals itself in the body. A person sins, it stops. So what's tshuva? To reveal a lukainu, back the level of a with us. To say that the, the, every Jew has a chilek of avaya in them, and avaya lukainu. Okay, what does it mean? The Alt Rebbe is explaining this first level of tshuva like this. Avedis separate us from Hashem. Nothing else can separate. I feel mechitzah shel barzel. Even an iron curtain cannot separate a Jew from Hashem. The only thing that separates a Jew from Hashem is Avedis. So to understand this, in the first paragraph, the Alt Rebbe explains, Hashem blew, or blows, we say, it was only by other Marishim. We say every day in the evening, Hashem blows the Neshama into the nose of a person. Yeah, he gets it, sure. He wrote the both books. <laughs> Obviously. So, could the tell you what my modern Alt Rebbe either said or wrote? But he didn't write, even write this. 
No, that's the Tzemach said picked which Maimorim to, to put in here. Out of 2,000 Maimorim, Tzemach said picked the Maimorim of a good Torah and a good Torah. But uh, Dr. Rebbe could have either written this or said this. I mean, that the parentheses many times are from the Tzemach Sedek. Unlike Torah, that, that's much shorter because, but um, the look at the, what? The parentheses are football. Apprentice, a lot of times, are footnotes of the Tzemach Sadiq. So he says, Shem Shoch, and Bebchin is Pnim, is Sechayis, which is Chelek Havaya Baruch Hu, which is a Chelek Havaya. Right? Chelek Alakab Mimal, Al Yaakov, Hashem Chevon Achlose. So he says, Kmei Al Derech Mosh, or Chelek Havaya Amen. Kmei Al Derech Mosh, or Josik, Dalt Rebbe gives in Gersich over the following Mosh. Jossik, when a person blows, he's a mokum to a place. In Yeshe's, a dove of chay to some mafsik bin tayim, if you're blowing somewhere, and there's a separation between you and the place you're blowing to, in heaven, if feach elu magir klal, he's a mokum. So that what you're blowing can't get to the destination because there's a blockage. Kol chamamish, in Yeshe's, a dove of chay to some mafsik bin gufa odom, le bechina sevelo elyin, so the Alt Rebbe <laughs> explains in the Gersh of Tshuva, Hashem is blowing Chayis into us, but if there's an Aveda, the Aveda blocks the. That's why the Alt Rebbe explains in Tanya that uh, a person who did Kardas Samisi Bidei Shemayim would die before 50 or 60 because they live from Kedusha, and therefore if the person does a sin of the magnitude of Kardas Samisi Bidei Shemayim, so that blocks the Chayis. So at 50 or 60, the person dies. Ah, but Amos, this Dr. Rebbe is all from Tanya's stuff. The truth is, nothing physical can block Hashem. Your Avedis is what separates the Jew from Hashem. But Tam, why do Avedis separate between the Jew and Hashem? Because they're against the will. If they're against the will, it's the opposite of what Hashem wants in creation. Hashem wants to deal with That's the purpose. If this blocks it, so therefore it stops the chayas. 146. In the middle of the first column. That it makes him filthy. Shara Nova Bemsa Perikasha Yizkod In and Mechit Ben Yisol Shabalavim Shabbat Shemayim What's Tshuva? When a Jew becomes aware of the blockage You know, calls mad you don't sit you don't know your sin or you don't care that you sin you're not going to do Tshuva When a person realizes and it bothers them that there's a blockage Gam in Ifrashu Saben Kod Shvach over Yisrael so that blockage causes a separation between Hashem and the Eden. And this is what the Zohar says, This is the secret of the concept of an Yisechem Hayum Avdilim. Okay, that already Dr. Rebbe doesn't say in Tanya all this. We look in the Mechitz and the, about Mechitz and Sitz is, uh, okay. Um, okay, Umashur Kos, Gam, and if Rashusom, this that it says in Meshus Chochmah. That the Avedis cause their Gaidam the separation, moving, it's understood as very simple. When the Hamshach is blocked by a thick sack, you can't have Gil Elokus. In other words, like this it's not, God forbid, that the person makes an Aveda and all of a sudden, then if, if that's the case, if it blocks it, the person should die right away. Why is it was called Kista the Chiyusa? There's a little bit of Chayis keeping them going. Dr. Rebbe says in Tanya to uh, 50 or 60. So he says here, because there's a Lubuj gas. The Aveda creates like a thick cloud. So the thick cloud, doesn't, it doesn't stop. The, there's a little bit of Gilui, but it's a completely different type of lead. The gas master, the gami, the goof. And look, it says, hey, the master, and gets the chuva, and what does mean that way to separate? It causes Elokus, instead of coming into Kedusha, 
goes into Klippa. Okay, so you have like this, this picture. The sun is shining in the sky. Elokus is vayipo babo, Hashem blew and toasted. There's a chai is coming from Elokus, right? Now a guy creates this big fat cloud, thick cloud. So what does it do? The Elokus is still shining, by the way. It doesn't allow it to come down to earth. So it darkens the, the, the sky. It darkens the, the, the earth. Yeah? That's exactly what an Aveda does that the person creates. When a person does an Aveda, they just put up a big, fat, thick cloud. You know, you can have a big sin and a little sin. But Al Rebbe says in Tanya, a lot of little sins lab just as much as a, one big sin, or more, even. What? The person does Shiva before he's 15 or 16, does that? Karis and Mitzvah Rishmaim helps Shuvah. It helps, Shuvah helps? Shuvah helps. Only by Mitzvah Bede Shemaim, not, uh, not when the courts kill you. When the Kobezgin kills you, Shuvah doesn't help. But Mitzvah Bede Shemaim or Karis? Karis is... Is that synonymous? But the Rebbe... No, the Rebbe explains, it's, the Rebbe always quoted, Neidah Yehuda explains the reason for that. Mitzvah Bede Shemaim... Um, yeah, okay, let's start with Mitzvah Bede Adam. When Bezgin kills you, Two witnesses testify you killed somebody, what I desecrated the Shabbos, whatever it may be. And and Bezdin uh, gives you skila. Yeah? Huh? If you do chuba, they wouldn't know that. They wouldn't know. He says chuva is in the heart. This is the way Native Buddha explains, but the Rebbe quotes it many times. The chuva is in the heart. You could be a great actor, cry, and this, I'm sorry, and this, but inside you don't mean it. Bezdin Halachically, can only ain't a dying elamasha ain't a verayis. A dying can only go by what he sees. Yeah. So the sin they saw through the testimony of the witnesses, they saw the sin. Right. Now comes uh, tshuva. Does Bezdin know you did tshuva? Really? They don't know. They don't know what's going inside your heart. You could be a good actor. So therefore, tshuva doesn't help. It doesn't. In essence, tshuva would help if Bezdin would know that you did tshuva. But how can Bezdin know? They're people. They don't know if you did tshuva. You could be an actor. Hashem knows if you did tshuva or not. So if a person did avera of kares and misa b'deshemay, where Hashem kills the person, Hashem knows the person did tshuva, obviously. So then Hashem forgives you. So then the, the, the modern the explanation that tshuva helps really. The only reason why it doesn't help when Bezdin kills you because they don't know for sure that you did tshuva. That's it. Misa b'deshemay and kares are synonymous, or they have the same punishment. No, one is 50, one is 60. One dies before 50, one dies before 60. So it's a machlek, is babbling your shalmi. In Tanya, the Alter Rebbe says, Kardas is 50, and Misa Vishwaim 60. It's an argument between babbling your shalmi. One says, the argument is one's 50, one's 60. The question, which one's which? In the world, it's accepted like Kardas is 60, and Misa Vishwaim is 50. But there's an argument between babbling your shalmi. Okay, so he says like this. And that's the whole union of Yaakov, Chavonach Losu. This is what the Altareb explains in the Gersh Tachuvo, that Yaakov is the rope of Hashem's inheritance. What does this mean? When a person goes down. When you go after Tavis, whether kosher, tray for Tavis, kosher Tavis. Even Tavis Heter is also Klippas Neuga. And then Dr. Rebbe says, you lower into Shoshkis at Meis. Good, and Bezal Lamayla Kumekin is Slapshis Ashpos Hashem. Ashpos Heitato in Esesphere's the Neuga. So, like Dr. Rebbe says in Tanya, if there's a rope between us and Hashem, yeah? And that rope is the highest coming down. So, when you go down, what happens when you drag the rope down? The thing tied on top also schleps down. So a person schleps Hashem into Klippa, into Golos. And therefore, when a person does Tshuva, and he gets rid of the foolishness of the world, like he says, hey, the level of Chinus Toshev, hey, Tatolim Keda. Vizel in Yimbar Hato Hashem, Elokeinu. Sha'oz, a Mavda, Beno Adam, Beno Elokeinu. So what's the level of Tshuva? He says, to remake. Elokeinu. That this level of Elokim comes in us. It's not black. No blockages. What's the connection between that and No, he said because the union of Tshuva is similar to the concept of Baruch HaTashem, rebringing. 
So what happens by tshuva? You return the hay back to where it came from. And now Hashem is mamshich. Alokeinu. He's He's blowing again. There's nothing blocking. Okay, that's the first level of tshuva. That tshuva, Hashem is. It tshuva, bechin is vasi teif. In other words, I'll explaining this. The first level of tshuva is sword made up. Turning away from evil. The Avedis is what separates you from Hashem. Get rid of the Avedis. You re-channel the Elokeinu. But the second level of tshuva is Asei Teif, meaning even a person could not do any evil. It could be a perfect Sur Meira. But if there's no Asei Teif, he's Mamai B'mitzvah. But Asei Teif, he's not to be diligent, you know, in Tayyar Mitzvah and Tfilah the way he's supposed to be, which is Atzus laziness. There's not even one person doing good. Okay? And he says, Shaydei Zegainim is Talkus. Tayyar Elian. So then you stop bringing down the level of Tayyar, which is the level of Yisod. Because it says Sadik Yitevu and Sadik you say that meaning like this. Surmira, he said is the hay of Hashem's name. Which is Malchus. Correct? Um Okay, so he says oh so the a Surmira is when you do the hay into evil. That's Malchus. Shina. Taiv is a level of tzaddik. Tzadik Tev, Tzadik Yisaid Elam. Tzadik is the level of Yisaid. Now Yisaid, because it's the level of Tev, you're not bringing down good. You might not be doing any evil, but you're not bringing down Kedusha. Tzadik is Tzadik, is Kabrus, is Kashus. Okay, just to explain it, before we go further, probably Al Rabbi says it also, I don't know. Um... I don't know, but there's a famous question Chassidus asks. The famous story of Elizabeth ben Dadaya. Yeah? He did every Aved in the book. He didn't do any mitzvahs. So then he did tshuva, right? After he asked everybody for help, he put his head between his knees, the Gemara says. He cried himself to death. Okay? Abbaskel is Mizumun Leilam right? Abbaskel came out and he said, So Chassidus asked the question, one minute. To get to Olam Abba, you need two things. You've got to get rid of the evil, because dirty people, so to speak, can't go into Gan Eden. Yeah? But the question is, he didn't do any mitzvahs. How can you go to Gan Eden without mitzvahs? You don't have any fuel. So Chassidus explained, no, because Al Treb explains, he's going to explain it here also. What, the, at the beginning, we guess the Tshuva, Al Treb said, but Tshuva mitzvahs sase. Over, he quotes the Bryce in Yuma. Over mitzvah says of Yishov, and he does me show much You transgress a positive mitzvah. You don't put on tefillin, right? Okay. So as soon as you do tshuva, you're forgiven. Why? Because it was only a passive sin. It was an active sin of doing evil. You didn't put on, you were lazy. You didn't put on tefillin. You didn't, uh, whatever, lululul. And you lay saser, Tshuva Taylor, the Yerma Kippur and Machap, you have to wait for Yom Kippur to get forgiven, right? So the Alter Rebbe says, even though Lachayra Esa Dechel Leisasa, which in, in the Gemara implies that Leisasa is worse than a, an essay, right? Because I say you do Tshuva, you forgive him right away. Here you need Yom Kippur also. So he says, I we say that Esa Dechel Leisasa. A positive mitzvah pushes off a negative mitzvah. If you can't do both of them, which one do you do? You do the positive one. Even though, meanwhile, you're transgressing a negative commandment. Yeah? So it says, nevertheless, I'll tell you something like this. The problem with tshuva of a positive essay, where mitzvah essay is, the rebellion is less. Right? Because passive rebellion is less than active rebellion. Loisa says, Shem says, don't eat chazer, and you're actively eating chazer. Yeah? They just said, put on tefillin, I'm lazy, I'm not putting on tefillin. It's passive rebellion, which is not as bad. 
But he says, but in a certain respect, the tshuva of Amesitsa say is harder or incomplete. Because, okay, I didn't put on Tzfil on Monday. Yeah? Okay, so I'm doing tshuva. Tuesday went, I'm going to put on Tzfil every day now. But bro, Monday's Tzfil you missed. How do you get, like, move a shalio chaliskin. Shlomo Malach said, a crookedness he can't fix. Right? You didn't put Tzfil on Monday. So how are you going to help but Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Shabbos, put, I mean Shabbos, but the, 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 every day putting on tefillin, okay, you did tshuva. You're not rebelling guy anymore. But right? you're actively doing what Hashem wants you to do. But Monday's tefillin, you're never going to get back. Right? So therefore, by loisase, it's interesting, by loisase, to use again, very coarse physical language, you get dirty. Yeah? So tshuva is a washing machine. So you clean yourself. So now you clean like you were before. Right? All the stains come out. But Lukhaira by Mitzvah Sasei, if you don't have a Seitei, that, that level of Chuva, that the Chuva is not going to help that. That's what Altareb says in Tanya. In, in, late, in other places in Chassidus, because Altareb is only Sefer Shobain, Altareb talks about levels for everybody. There's a level of Chuva. Because the blows have been the Dayach Siddhis explains. It was such a deep chuva that it made the undone done. It's not only that Vayesh became mitzvahs. Even the mitzvahs that say he didn't do, he reached a level of chuva, which is a super, super great level of chuva, that the undone became done. To make the done undone, the Aveda you did, go get a clean, go with a car wash and a neshama wash, you know, tshuva, uh, you'll be clean again. But there is a level of tshuva that makes the undone done. It's a super level. That's what Rebbe Lozab and Zayi reached that level of tshuva. That's why Yesh Kain Elam B'Shachas. What? Not because he died. He reached such a level of tshuva. Huh? It was, it was a real cry that made him die. You know, kids never died from crying because they didn't get what they want. He never saw a kid, Chas Shom die because he didn't get what he wanted. Okay? They say, I'm dying, yeah. But the Bill of Pach, the kid is The Bill of wrote a pan to the Tamar it was in Russia, not like LA. The winters, there was very, a lot of times it was pushing Olivana. Winter in Ru- Russian winters where snow and it. So he wrote a pan into the Zemachetic. If you don't do something, I'm not going to be able to marry. I'm not going to be able to live. I'm going to die. From aggravation of not doing Kiddush Levon. Which is not even a mitzvah in the Torah. Not even a mitzvah in the Rabbanan. I mean, it's part of the mitzvah of Kiddush Levon, but it's not a, a mitzvah. It's a thing needs to be done. No. So the the level he reached was proven that it touched his core from the fact that he died. It wasn't because he died. The death proved, so to speak, and showed that this has touched him to the to the essence, to the core. He wasn't a rabbi. They, they called him rabbi because because of the tshuva that he did. Time. Yeah. Even the famous story with Avner with the Ramban, you know, in Pasha's Azinu, everything says, you know, the future. The Ramban had a student Avner. It's a famous story. The Rebbe quotes it in many sikhs. The, the, the Ramban had a student called Avner, who turned way off completely, and he called the Ramban a Yom Kippur. Yeah. And uh, in front of the Ramban, he killed the pig and roasted it and ate it and uh, did a whole bunch of Avedas. So he says to the Ramban, how many Avedas did I just do? So the Ramban said five, he said no six. So they had a whole learning thing, if he'd sinned five sins or six sins. Then the Ramban said to him, what happened to you? He said, you caused me to, to fry out. Why? Because you taught us 
then Parshas Hazinu, it says the future of every person's name in their future. And that's Baba Maises. So the man said, give me a minute. He turned to the wall. He davened Hashem and said, Hashem, help me. So Hashem told him, it's in Parshish Hazinu. It says, Ashbisa me'enesh zichram. It'll be erasing. And the third letter is, of the, those words, is Reb Avner. The third letter of the first word is Reish, and then Aleph and Beis and Nun Reish. Yeah. So, so the Gemara says Avner was touched, and he asked Rambam what to do. He said, "It says in the pasuk what's going to be your end." So he took a boat, went out to sea, and was never heard of again. Okay, but the Rebbe points out that in the hint of Avazino, it doesn't say Avner; it says Reb Avner. Reb is an illusion of importance. The, the, his story is it was Reb Avner because of his tshuva not because he was a big rush look what he did Anyum Kippur in front of the Ramban I mean uh, what can you get worse than that but uh, that's the level of tshuva oh my god